Our next panel, Addressing Public Land Challenges, features the Secretary of the Interior, the Honorable Deb Holland. The department manages more lands in Western states than any other entity. The Secretary will engage with Governors Brad Little of Idaho, Doug Burgum of North Dakota, Michelle Lujan Grisham of New Mexico, Lou Guerrero of Guam, Kevin Stitt of Oklahoma, and Jared Polis of Colorado to discuss challenges of Western land management, including wildfire resilience and the role of national parks in energizing recreational economies. The conversation will be moderated by Governor Brad Little of Idaho. Governor Little. Well, thank, thanks, Jim. Uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation with Interior Secretary Deb Holland. Uh, obviously, the Western Governors has a keen interest in the Department of Interior. Today, we're joined by Governor Luhan Grisham, uh, Governor Polis, Colorado, Governor Burgum of North Dakota, Governor Stitt of Oklahoma, and Governor Guerrero of Guam. As most people know, the Department of Interior is a, a big part of the West and of our states. Uh, in some states, their uh, percent of land ownership uh, eclipses all private land and all state land, and, and it varies over the state. And of course, the Department of Interior has a lot of other responsibilities uh, that has a big impact on the people of the West. And of course, we're, we're delighted to have uh, Secretary Holland, the first Native American to ever serve in the cabinet and a member of the Pueblo of Laguna tribe in, in uh, New Mexico. Uh, she's had a, a varied life uh, with a lot of experience in public service, both she and her family. Uh, her mother worked for the uh, BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, uh, for nearly 25 years. And uh, she earned her law degree and was the first woman elected to the Laguna Development Corporation. And then uh, she served as tribal administrator for the San Felipe Pueblo until taking over the reins uh, at Interior. She also served in the U.S. House as the delegate from the 1st Congressional District. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, welcome to the WGA. We look forward to hearing from you. Um, if you want to open remarks, or let me, I'll go around to the other governors real briefly, and then we'll let you respond. Uh, let me introduce you to Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, who I doubt you've ever made the acquaintance of. So, uh, Governor Lujan Grisham, uh, uh, you're first on the list. Um, thank you, Governor Little. And just when I think you don't have, you know, a growing sense of humor, I'm clear that you do. This is a very, uh, sec Madam Secretary, friendly, very effective, very bipartisan group. Uh, the Western Governors, as you know, has long enjoyed that effort and reputation, and it's really important to us in the West. Uh, and uh, so we're delighted to have you. And uh, as everyone uh, uh, should correctly assume, uh, not only uh, is New Mexico incredibly proud of this historic position that the secretary holds, but she is a beloved, uh, she's a beloved New Mexican and we all know her. And uh, I'm lucky to have worked with her in a number of capacities. And I wasn't really clear if we're just supposed to say hello. So given that we've got a short amount of time, I might just do two quick things and hope I'm doing it right. Uh, Secretary, first, thank you again for leaning in your staff and your team with Western Governors uh, on the leasing moratorium and you know doing a comprehensive review. You've been available uh, and uh, an effective communicator, and I feel confident that certainly our issues have made their way independently and objectively to you. And you know we're all waiting anxiously for that comprehensive report. But I appreciate very much um, uh, the opportunity to talk to you about our energy efforts, and certainly our uh, climate change initiatives in the state and with Western governors in total. I was wondering about two quick things, you know, uh, what you think will happen in terms of significant permanent federal funding uh, 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 to deal with capping uh, abandoned wells. Certainly, uh, uh, Governor Burgum is a great example of making sure that whatever federal funds are available, do something about that. New Mexico, you know, certainly worries about that. And maybe the second quick thing is, 
We're preparing to, uh, by executive order, create a 30 by 30 task force. I'm just wondering uh, about insight uh, in terms of definitions of conservation and land ownership or land management, given all the different partners that would be affected as we work harder at uh, conservation aspects. Great to see you. Thank you again. And thank you, Governor Little, for introducing me. Uh, Governor Polis. Greetings uh, from the great state of Colorado. I'm at Morgan Community College in, in Eastern Colorado and uh, wanna thank you for your work. Um, first, uh, on behalf of the whole West, we're thrilled with your agency's presence in the West. Uh, I wanna thank you in particular for your presence in Grand Junction and Lakewood. Uh, we hope that you can uh, increase the number of, uh, of folks in your Western headquarters. Uh, it's a great asset to be in and around uh, the lands you manage. Um, I, um, as you know, served, served 10 years in Congress. And when you try to administer them from Virginia or DC, there's just something missing. So uh, to be adjacent to, you know, Utah and, and Colorado and uh, the great states in the West is um, absolutely going to be good for uh, agency morale and retention because folks who like to work in public lands management want to be you know, hopefully within a, a thousand miles of what they're of what they're managing, they bring a great passion to it, and uh, of course, there's a great quality of life. So we uh, thank you for your continued work to help grow our Grand Junction headquarters, Lakewood presence. I know there's presence in some other states in the American West as well. Um, one thing I wanted to really bring up is on wildlife. Um, in Colorado, we have a voter uh, required reintroduction of the wolf uh, coming up. We also have, uh, through our own initiative, uh, we are seeking a 10J for wolverine introduction, reintroduction in our state. It's been about uh, 100 years for wolverines. It's been about 80 years for wolves. I'm happy to report we had our first wolf pups born in Colorado uh, in the last couple of weeks in 80 years. Now, that's not enough to sustain a population. We need, uh, of course, uh, the federal support for our, uh, our, our reintroduction effort required by the voters. And in general, I hope that you can amend the, the federal regs to allow experimental population designations um, to be applied to at-risk species that uh, aren't protected under, under the ESA, like the gray wolf and wolverine, maybe incentivize reintroduction efforts, uh, liberalize the federal regs uh, to help advance conservation efforts to address the extinction crisis. It shouldn't be this hard. Now, different governors and different states have different perspectives, but I think what, what we, where we probably would agree is, is we would like the ability to, to work with you quicker and more flexibly uh, around the wildlife management issues that affect our states. And again, in our state in particular, it's the voter required mandate around wolves, uh, the initiative around wolverines. We're also in the midst of a uh, Black-footed ferret reintroduction. We hope it's going well. We're doing some groundbreaking work around uh, sylvatic plague prevention in prairie dogs that we're happy to, the, the primary uh, food species, of course, for black-footed ferret. Happy to share that with others. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that you can speak to how the states and Department of Interior can work best to protect our endangered species, our threatened species, uh, restore healthy habitats that have been in balance for tens of thousands of years and might have been thrown out of whack in the last 50 or 100 years through human intervention uh, and how we can leave the American West uh, in a more authentic way than, than, than we found it. So I want to thank you for your work and we'll look forward to engaging on these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Governor Burgum. Secretary Holland, just want to say uh, congratulations and uh, thank you for your service, uh, both to the, the state, the tribes, uh, the nation, and now uh, again to the nation in your current role. Uh, we look forward to hosting you in North Dakota. Uh, we've got so many things that, that we can uh, share with you when you're here across all five of your major agencies with BOR and BLM and BIA. U.S. Fish and Wildlife and National Parks, uh, and we would look forward to that. But let me start with some gratitude. Thank you for the uh, reversal within 24 hours on the uh, prohibition on drilling on the trust lands within uh, the Mandan, Hadassa, Rikara, or MHA Nation lands, because that was uh, so important to them. And so thank you for being part of that. Uh, continuing on that theme, would love to uh, also ask that there's a review to allow uh, MHA and our other four tribal nations with which we share geography uh, to have a primacy uh, just as states can achieve 
regulatory primacy around class six wells or the wells for, for carbon sequestration. Uh, because again, uh, if we wanna try to continue on our decarbonization path, uh, our state has set a goal uh, to be carbon neutral by 2030 as a state. Uh, and, and we're gonna need to be able to do that shoulder to shoulder with the tribes and they need to have the same opportunity that we do as a state uh, to manage uh, that carbon. And also on the, the flaring front, which we're making great progress, uh, there again, we could use some help there from the BIA standpoint because some of, in some cases on within MHA, which represents about 20% of our state's energy production, uh, they uh, find themselves uh, unable to complete uh, gathering lines, which would eliminate uh, flaring uh, because of a delay in getting uh, easements from from uh, through BIA held land. So again, uh, speeding up some of those regulatory permitting process could be great for the environment and great for the tribe and. So we appreciate your help on that. Uh, and the last thing I'll just say here on this first uh, go round is, uh, we'd love to have the, uh, your support relative to, uh, within our national park, the major loop road within the Theodore Roosevelt National Park uh, collapsed in the landslide uh, several years ago. It's been stalled uh, for a number of reasons, but any help you can give us to get that open, particularly now when we see uh, so many, such an increase in visiting our great national parks, that would be uh, fantastic. And again, uh, thank you. Uh, we look forward to uh, uh, sharing with you the plans that we have working with uh, the U.S. Uh, Forest Service, U.S. National Grasslands, and the National Park Service, uh, the National Park Foundation, the state of North Dakota, and the private sector. We're well underway on, on creating a fantastic uh, presidential library just outside the entrance of Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Uh, the Congress did approve in December a 93-acre land transfer from the National Grasslands uh, to the Foundation Board. So we now have a site. Uh, we've got plans. We've got uh, over $150 million has been raised uh, well on its way, and we look forward to uh, uh, continuing to shape that project during your tenure uh, because it really could be a hallmark for all of the things that Roosevelt helped contribute to, whether it's the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service or the National Park Service itself, and really a tribute to the great work that your agencies do. So we look forward to that, that partnership. And thank you for being with us uh, and with these other great uh, governors. Uh, as Governor Lou Anne Grisham said and Brad said, we've got a great team of people that have worked really well together. I had the honor of chairing Western Governors just recently and, and want to, again, uh, great to be with my fellow governors and Great to have you joining us at this uh, virtual conference. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Governor Kevin Stipp from Oklahoma. Thanks so much, uh, Brad. And uh, Secretary Holland, thank you for, for uh, your service to our state and looking forward to meeting you personally sometime soon. And uh, it's great to be with you. Um, in our state, um, you know, M the McGirt decision was a uh, was a uh, huge issue in our state, and I look forward to kind of talking to you about that later in the Q&A section, but uh, welcome and uh, glad to be on here with you and, and turn it back to you, Brad. Well, thank you, uh, Governor Leon Guerrero from Guam at five o'clock in the morning. Yes, thank you, Governor Little. Um, and I also want to echo my uh, congratulations to Madam Secretary. And I'd like to also um, say that uh, you are certainly have a great responsibility as uh, real estate asset is and uh, seashores protection and conservation issues are very critical to the quality of life and the livelihood uh, of our people. And I understand that there are some common issues that maybe Guam shares with the whole United States, but in another sense, we are quite unique as we are way over here in um, the uh, Pacific Ocean uh, involved with our regional uh, leaders of the Pacific Islands. And of course, we are one of our major issues that we are concerned about is our land. And uh, we are on a campaign to aggressively uh, encourage and persuade the federal government to return uh, our lands and excess land that they won't be using. We have a concern about our seashore protection. Just recently, the National Fisheries, uh, Marine Fisheries had issued a proposed rule to um, 
establish and to designate uh, waters of our seashores as critical habitats, which would uh, disallow our use for fishing, which a uh, subsistence uh, um, situation uh, that it would create. And I look forward also to discussions about uh, federal, uh, the federal region here and its uh, impact with the compact negotiations. Madam Secretary, I don't know if you are aware, but uh, the island sovereign nations are in negotiations now and uh, they are waiting for the um, decision of the Department of Interior whether they would be part of the negotiations of their compact agreement. Uh, I am very excited to also work with you as uh, you are very sensitive to indigenous populations and we continue to be a, um, a uh, unincorporated territory which does not have very much strength in our control and our political status and we are um, working very hard to do that plebiscite and would like to discuss that more in details and see how maybe the Department of Interior can help us move that along. Again, like everyone else, my governor colleagues, we look forward to working and engaging in really some real, really good productive outcomes that protect the quality of our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Secretary, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, um, Governor Little. Thank you, um, Governors, for having me this afternoon. Good afternoon, good morning, Governor Guerrero. Thank you for getting up early and joining us. And um, I'm so happy to, to have the opportunity to speak with you again, to give you all an update since the last time we talked in May. So since we last met, the Department of the Interior has been hard at work taking steps to create good paying union jobs and clean energy economy, preparing for tough wildfire and drought seasons and working to live up to our trust and treaty responsibilities to our Indian tribes across the country. These important issues are not just important to me, they're important to President Biden his fiscal year 2022 budget proposal demonstrates his commitment to these issues. And I am thrilled to work with partners like Secretary Vilsack, Administrator Regan, and others across the cabinet to deliver on the president's priorities. Before I get into that, I want to extend my sincerest gratitude to the Western Governors Association. The team at WGA has been really terrific as the administration gets going. WGA plays an important role at a time when complex issues require us to work closely together to find solutions. I also want to thank the governors on the call. You and your staffs get the job done for your states. We have had those experiences with you and we're very appreciative for the time and attention that you have given our staff um, here at the Department of the Interior. Thank you so much for welcoming me, welcoming me, for bringing incredible ideas to the table that we can collaborate on and for working with us to implement investments in the American Rescue Plan. The American Rescue Plan is still an important step in our path to recovery after this terrible virus took hold of our health and our economy. You all were on the front lines ensuring your communities, no matter their size, has had what they needed to weather the storm. My first visit as secretary was to New Mexico where I joined Governor Lujan Grisham and the All Pueblo Council of Governors to discuss the historic investments in the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Bureau of Indian Education. The BIA has been in consultation with tribes in each of your states as we work to implement the American Rescue Plan. I'm particularly proud of the commitment to tribes reflected in the 2022 budget proposal. That budget includes $4.2 billion, which is an increase of more than $728 million from 2021 across all Indian Affairs programs and to ensure we continue our efforts to address the missing and murdered indigenous peoples crisis, the president included $16.5 million for programs like our missing and murdered unit. All of the work 
that all of you are doing at the state level with task forces, bills, support for initiatives to combat domestic violence, and so much more will help bolster our efforts on this issue here at the Interior. Today, I'll update you on how we're building a clean energy economy, working to conserve public lands through locally led collaborations, and addressing the wildland fires and drought conditions affecting so many of your states. First and foremost, I want to talk about the severe wildfires and drought conditions um, that are taking place currently in the West. Climate change contributes to the historic drought that is creating a huge strain across the West. I know that farmers, ranchers, businesses, and communities are hurting. There's no easy fix to this, of course, but I want you to know that the Interior Department is taking drought incredibly seriously. We're working closely with the team at USDA and other agencies to minimize the impacts of the drought in the short term and to develop a plan to facilitate conservation and economic growth in the long term. This will be a whole of government effort. The tough choices each of you are having to make can help get us through this difficult situation. The department will continue to be a partner in this tough water year and beyond. Where there is drought, there is a greater risk of wildfire. Secretary Vilsack and I received a briefing in May where fire experts are predicting a very tough fire season. 2020 was a record year with more than 10 million acres burning across the country. We are corralling resources for another tough season. Quite frankly, wildfire has not always received the attention and resources that it deserves. But the president's budget reflects increases that demonstrate how seriously we take this issue, including providing a $100 million increase for fuels management and burned area rehabilitation work. In total, the budget proposal contains $1.1 billion for Interior's wildland fire management program, as well as increases in funding for drought mitigation and science-based investments that will help the department and communities prepare for and address the aftermath of natural hazard events. These investments help support the work that we're doing alongside states to address the impacts invasive species have on our natural spaces. Governor Guerrero, I know that you've been out front on this issue recently. I want you all to be the first to know that the Interior is planning to work with our National Invasive Species Council co-chairs Secretaries Vilsack and Raimondo and other NISC member agencies to constitute the Invasive Species Advisory Committee. We're building on the American Rescue Plan's success with the President's American Jobs Plan and the President's fiscal year 2022 budget proposal. President Biden's budget will make much needed investments in communities and projects that will advance our vision for a prosperous and equitable clean energy future. The interior is in a unique position to be a leader in putting our nation on a path to achieve net zero emissions, create good paying jobs and benefit underserved communities. So we've taken significant steps to advance renewable energy opportunities across the country. With Governor Newsom's help, we recently joined with the Department of Defense to announce an agreement to advance areas for offshore wind off the northern and central coasts of California. This is the first meaningful step toward potential development in the Pacific, which could create tens of thousands of jobs. We're also working to advance wind and solar projects on public lands and tribal lands. As you all know best, our public lands in the West hold some of the most promising wind and solar resources. We have to be thoughtful to responsibly map out clean energy and transmission projects, and we want to do that. I appreciate your engagement on the early planning efforts. As you know, we're also reviewing the state of the federal conventional energy programs and outlining next steps for the department and Congress to improve stewardship of public lands and waters and to build a just and equitable energy future. I know how important oil and gas revenues are for state budgets. I also recognize that demand and energy innovations are diversifying and thus states revenue sources and economy. 
I look forward to continuing to work with all of you to create jobs and a clean energy economy that addresses the challenges of the 21st century. One of the best investments we can make in communities in the West is in stewarding the lands and waters that sustain us and the generations to come. The Great American Outdoors Act's funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund and Deferred Maintenance Backlog will bring much needed investments to each of your states. These programs, which enjoy bipartisan support, represent the best of what we can do together on conservation. The president's 2022 budget proposal includes $1.9 billion for new climate related investments to conserve and manage natural resources, study how they're changing, build resilience to protect communities and lands from significant impacts and contribute to the reduction of greenhouse gases. All of this funding will help advance the America the Beautiful initiative, the nation's first ever national conservation goal it's President Biden's challenge for all of us to work together to conserve 30% of our lands and oceans by 2030. The vision is inclusive and collaborative. It's about supporting locally led and voluntary efforts to conserve, steward, and restore lands and waters on local, state, tribal, and private lands. As someone who comes from a family that farms, ranches, and hunts, and who grew up in rural and agricultural communities, I know how important it is to get input from all of our land stewards as we put America the Beautiful into action. We are at the beginning of our work together and I look forward to collaborating with each of you as we work to meet the president's ambitious goals. And as I wrap up, I want to emphasize again how much I value our partnership as we face all of these challenges that are impacting Americans in the West. I believe that ongoing, honest dialogue is the best way for us to collaborate and chart a path together. Uh, thank you again for your continued hospitality. And Governor Little, I will turn it back to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, and, and you addressed it, and we appreciate that. Uh, we had a conversation with Secretary Grandholm yesterday about uh, both siding and, and utility corridors, particularly to move a lot of this uh, new energy, whether it be solar or wind or, or whatever it be, uh, to move that around and, and, and your awareness of that. And if you would uh, uh, work with your staff, you know, we've got models uh, where the Western states, whether it be shared stewardship or good neighbor, to where perhaps some of the NEPA impediments to get some of these things done, particularly if they're to meet the president's goal and your goal. Um, the Western governor stands ready and willing to work with you at any time. And then it goes without saying uh, your agency's role in what we do about strategic uh, minerals. We talked to Secretary Granholm about that, that some of the critical minerals that we need and, and compounds that we need uh, for battery technology, for, for the, the my, the semiconductor industry, for whatever it is, uh, we stand willing and willing and ready uh, to work with you to facilitate that, so that American dependence upon foreign sources uh, continues to go down. So uh, the only thing I would add is we had our land board meeting, uh, and one of the issues was COVID protocols and fire camp. And if you just check on that, you know we believe that. Uh, that is a significant added cost uh, that's out there. So if you'd uh, check with your fire uh, managers about, uh, you know, because what I understand is that the COVID protocols we had last year are the COVID protocols for this year. And that might add a little efficiency to the, uh, all, all the firefighters, interior, agriculture and state. So with that, uh, the floor is open, Governors. And um, Governor Little, if I may, just to answer very quickly Governor Lujan Grisham's question about um, uh, the orphan wells and abandoned mines. There's $16 billion um, in the President's American Jobs Plan um, that would, uh, and it would create um, thousands and thousands of jobs. So thank you for that question.
Governor Guerrero. Yes, thank you again for um, this opportunity. And I just wanted to um, ask uh, Secretary Holland about her Invasive Species Advisory Council. Um, and is there any way that uh, our island could be involved in that? Um, we are really being very much uh, invaded by the rhino beetle. Our coconut trees are uh, dying, and then we have some invasive uh, plants also that's killing off the lives of our good plants. And uh, that's something that I think I would like to be, if possible, uh, be a part of that, um, as I could then maybe contribute or then learn also a lot about what maybe we can do to um, protect our, our resources. Thank you, thank you, Governor. And yes, we, we would be, um, we would value your input, we would value your experience and your knowledge in this area. And um, I will have um, my staff reach out to your staff. Thank you. Understood. I think you raised your hand. Sure. Yes. Thank you so much, Secretary Holland. Um, my question, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with the McGirt decision that uh, was a very narrow Supreme Court decision last summer and a 5-4 ruling. Uh, basically, it said that for the purposes of criminal jurisdiction, uh, the reservations were not never disestablished at statehood back in 1907. Uh, my question is, in, on May 18th, um, in a very narrow decision on just criminal jurisdiction, uh, the agency, the U.S. Office of Surface Mining and Reclamation, kind of expanded that, um, that ruling to the civil arena. Uh, so my question is, under what authority did uh, the Department of Interior expand that from a criminal to civil, because our fear is that the state has lost its sovereignty in eastern Oklahoma. And so now there's uh, tribal members. And, and again, I'm a member of the Cherokee Nation, and we have 39 federally recognized tribes in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, so we love our heritage. But as the governor of the state for all 4 million Oklahomans, uh, it's concerning that some tribes are saying, hey, now we are um, we have jurisdiction to operate mines. We have some tribes saying they don't pay taxes anymore. And we have a million and a half non-natives living now on reservations. So it's really put us into a situation where we have a checkered board of jurisdiction in eastern Oklahoma. Um, and, you know, our, our theory was or our opinion was that it was a very narrow ruling dealing with the criminal major crimes acts only. And so now the Department of Interior, uh, through the Office of Mining, has expanded that to civil. So, um, you know, where, why did that happen and why did we move it into civil so quickly? Governor, thank you so much for that question. And I know it is a concern for you. And I, I hope that our, my staff here um, uh, or the folks here at the department have uh, um, reached out to your office, and, and I know that we want to continue to work with the state of Oklahoma uh, during this transition. Um, I can say that uh, what I can tell you today uh, is that based on legal advice, um, we are moving uh, forward to ensure that the Office of Surface Mining um, um, will exercise their jurisdiction over Indian land. So. Um, I, I know that's not an answer you want to hear today. I am more than happy to make sure that uh, the folks in that office uh, reach out to you, that they are uh, having conversations to answer your questions. Um, and um, I, 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 I promise you that we can be in touch um, and hopefully answer all the questions that you have. Um, I feel very confident that um, that our office has been reaching out to Indian tribes. I, I recognize that when um, this issue first happened, we, um, we were waiting to see uh, how the tribes, um, you know, what the tribes wanted and how they were um, working with this decision. Um, I can say that we're also working with the Department of Justice 
uh, that we're acting consistently uh, with the Supreme Court's decision. Um, I appreciate the question. I, I promise you that we will be in touch uh, with your office and hopefully uh, work through every question that you have. Yeah, th thank you so much. I'd love to, to come to D.C. and meet with meet with you because really it's a, a degradation of the state's sovereignty. And if it continues to expand, we're hearing from mining companies right now. They have to uh, they thought that they were operating in the state of Oklahoma. And so now there's this question about uh, the jurisdiction. And so, again, uh, we interpret the Supreme Court decision very narrowly. Uh, it said it was only for the Major Crimes Act. And we're just afraid that it's it's uh, creeping into other areas. And it really is going to have to be uh, litigated because we have a totally different opinion in the state of Oklahoma. I, I understand, Governor. Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to being in touch with you and your office. Thank you. Thank Governor, you, Secretary. Governor, Governor Polis. Yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, um, this also came up on our call with uh, Secretary Granholm, but I wanted to, you know, we're a state in Colorado where federal government owns about 40 percent of our land. Some states it's even greater, as you know, in the American West. And I'm really thrilled that you come from New Mexico, so you understand that. It's always an interesting concept to describe, uh, you know, elected officials and, and appointees from the East Coast. Um, one of our goals that we share with the administration is renewable energy. Uh, I wanted to, uh, you to speak to uh, expediting the siting of renewable energy, solar and wind projects on Department of Interior land. Uh, anything that we can do to shorten the timeline, the red tape. Uh, I know there's an inventory being done ac uh, across federal lands, but I think it needs to be coupled with an expedited process around utilization of, uh, in your case, Department of Interior, obviously some of us also have interest in Department of Agriculture, U.S. Forest Service lands for uh, purposes of solar and wind energy, and I'd love you to address that. And then if you could just address how we can also expedite uh, sort of the 10-J process around ecosystem restoration and wolverine introduction in our case and uh, the voter required wolf introduction in our state. Governor, thank you so much. I, I appreciate um, those questions. I know that you mentioned um, in your introduction uh, how, you know, regarding the Endangered Species Act. And uh, I just want you to know that we have a tremendous group of scientists here at the department and we feel very committed and compelled to follow the science in every issue with respect to wildlife habitat uh, Restoration Endangered Species Act, um, though, and and want you to know that um, um, President Biden uh, is committed to essentially unleashing the science. So um, we're happy to always work with you and your departments to make sure that we're helping you. You know, helping to uh, aid your decisions, helping to give you the needed information that you need, uh, and and really want to be your partner if, if that's indeed what the state wants to do. Um, and uh, with respect to, uh, yes, we, we like that. We want to get as many renewable energy projects as possible uh, out there. And so um, we, we'll be happy to, to work with you on that as well. Uh, we can be in touch about, about particular and specific uh, uh, areas, projects, geographic locations, and just know that you have a partner here uh, when it comes to moving renewable energy forward. Governor Burgum, we just got a couple minutes left, so. Okay, Secretary Holland, uh, hey, uh, one big one and one little one. The big one is uh, 30 by 30. I, I was part of a group of 15 governors that sent a list of questions to President Biden about the implementation and state consultation. You mentioned the remarks uh, wanting to work as partners. So we would look forward to that because we have a number of questions about how that might go forward. We share the aspiration of, uh, of uh, as, we, as all of us do in the West, we are the citizens in our state uh, care about clean air, clean water and conservation uh, on the lands that we live on and occupy. So we will look forward to having those consultations and make sure that that is a partnership and not a federal top down that could have a lot of unintended consequences. The easy one uh, is just a thank you. This is way down in the organization, but there's a fantastic uh, individual who's worked for U.S. Fish and Wildlife for 26 years who's retiring. I got to give him a shout out, Rob Holm. He was the leads the 
uh, the joint effort is one of the only ones in the country between uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Fish, fish Hatchery uh, by Garrison Dam by Lake Sakakawea, North Dakota, uh, near MHA, and that's a joint venture with the North Dakota Game and Fish. Uh, and this group does incredible work on endangered species, on recreational. He's retiring. His replacement hasn't been named. So I guess the challenge to you and the head of U.S. Fish and Wildlife is we want a clone of Rob Holm to come to North Dakota uh, and take that position. If you've got somewhere in the country, uh, we'd love to have him. Thank you, Governor. That's so nice. It's very nice of you. Uh, you know, I feel blessed to work with an amazing team of people here at the Department of the Interior, um, just dedicated public servants, who some who have been here for um, for a very long time. And so I, I'm grateful that you recognize that and we'll do our best to clone him, uh, certainly. Uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for mentioning 30 by 30, America the Beautiful initiative. Uh, we have every single intention of making it a grassroots up um, endeavor. We feel it's important to get feedback, to get buy-in, to get uh, perspectives from uh, stakeholders across the country. We want it to be collaborative. We want it to be uh, we want to be partners on on this initiative, and it, it is anything but uh, the federal government's. Um, you know, I mean, we're not. They're going to tell us. We're not going to tell them. So um, we welcome anyone who wants to participate, and we're we're certainly uh, thrilled and happy um, if if that if that is the case. So, uh, and I think it's a it's an excellent way for. Um, our country to unify around a tremendous conservation effort. So thank you so much for that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And Jim, before I hand it back to you, uh, to all the governors and, and Madam Secretary, uh, you can see that you've got great partners in the governors from, uh, from Oklahoma to Guam and all the real estate in between. And uh, uh, we want to be part of the solutions to an ever-evolving uh, West, to an ever-evolving Interior Department. And, and please uh, uh, include us, and we will uh, stay in constant communications, and we appreciate uh, your time today and your thoughtful answers. So with that, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, Governors and Madam Secretary.